Hey everyone. Today we'll be talking on test case generation for competitive programming. And the very first question uh, I would like to ask is should we generate test cases for every problem? The answer to this is pretty subjective, but uh, I believe that you know we should generate test cases for those problems in which we are not entirely sure about the algorithm or uh, the places where you know our solution could go wrong is uh, is much higher than um, the cost of a few quick fixes and uh, there's no denying that generating test cases is an investment of both time and effort but um, if you know um, if, if you uh, submit a solution five or six times and it's just not working maybe uh, it's time to take a step back and uh, um, do it in the proper formal test case way uh, rather than you know just going on bulldozing and uh, uh, many competitions also penalize you for uh, multiple wrong submissions and uh, so hopefully by discussing the patterns that we require for test case generation uh, we could avoid submitting wrong answers or even save time because uploading a solution usually is much more expensive than running a test locally. So the example I have taken is of a simple insertion sort. Um, you know, uh, an input array A is given and our output should be in B. B is sorted in the ascending order. As we can see, uh, length minus 1 minus i uh, is taking the ith max. So this this loop is figuring out which is the ith max, and uh, then we are setting the value uh, at at that particular max index as minus one. So let's see whether this uh, algorithm has been implemented properly. Let's run a simple test without any negative numbers initially and uh, hopefully this will work no no it isn't okay so what could have gone wrong this test case is a very general simple test case it should have worked so once we go into solve and uh, break our head over this a little we could probably figure out that this is going wrong you know um, the index at B, uh, the the index of the ith max at B is being set to minus one. Uh, what should be happening is this: the original array needs to have certain indexes, uh, certain certain elements uh, deleted. And by setting it to minus one, essentially what we are doing is we are deleting those elements. Uh, this was a mistake, B to A. A much more efficient way than probably reading the code is to run a debugger through this and uh, of course the debugger without any debug statements is just going to run through the whole uh, you know test so you could set uh, debug points at, at places where you know you are a uh, little worried about the algorithm not performing correctly especially in places like this where there's quite a few conditions till this point there's two for loops there's a condition here so you want to see whether uh, what are the values being set as max maybe for every uh, iteration i maybe for some iterations you can you can even uh, set a condition here just for debugging that uh, if i equal to equal to 2 or 3 stuff like that in any case uh, what has happened is we have corrected this issue and once we run this test it works great now let's test for negative integers also so remember after sorting this is the array we should have this is the input array into solver so let's have a look whether this works. No, it doesn't. Right, what could have gone wrong? 
this is a little more uh, you know obvious or easy to catch because what's happening here is that we are setting max to zero and if they're negative numbers then max should be set to something like the minimum value of minimum sorry value of an integer uh, and let's run the algo let's see what the output is it's still wrong because what's happening here is that we are setting uh, we are deleting elements by setting them to minus one while it should be being set to something like this now we see that the algorithm is working uh, so let's try and figure out a pattern about how to solve uh, problems using these test cases initially what we did is we generated a few test cases we ran the simplest one to see whether you know at least uh, the simple test case is working and we have at least minimum amount of confidence in the algorithm that didn't work and once we figured out what the problem was we again fell back to running test cases here again once the um, issue was found we went back to the algorithm figured out what the issue is and came back so we see a pattern of generating test cases going back to the algorithm and fixing debugging till the point that this test case starts working and then writing new test cases up to what point do we write these new test cases uh, cases is up to us uh, but in general if you are taking more than 30 seconds to think of a new test case maybe it's time to submit the solution um, you don't want to invest too much time on uh, figuring out test cases and uh, trying to debug issues which do not exist so um, I, I would suggest if you know it's taking you more than 30 seconds to uh, and definitely if it's taking you more than a minute to figure out a new test case uh, maybe it's time to make a submission and figure out whether the algorithm is properly implemented or not. So later on we'll be talking on uh, how to use multiple solvers uh, to uh, test a given solution and that's I think a, a very powerful tool uh, especially in competitive programming uh, but hopefully now you have a strong enough base to to actually implement multiple solvers for testing. Uh, one final thing I'd like to say is uh, when you want your programs to be testable uh, usually you want to test just one function uh, you know something like a solve uh, and the reason we do this is because internally we do not want to write small test cases it's too big a time investment and also effort investment uh, when it comes to competitive programming what we want to do is use something like a black box where we given an input and we get an output so um, usually you have a main class which implements your, uh, your main method and in this one there's absolutely no logic there's just uh, taking an input and giving out output and uh, this really helps in uh, generating these test cases or basically testing a program because uh, you know java junit does not allow uh, static methods to be tested and your main method is by definition static um, so i would suggest you um, either save this this particular template uh, it's it's found very often um, with high level programmers in in uh, competitive sites and uh, it's quite wise of them to uh, keep their solution logic and uh, their input and output separate so that they can you know test the program uh, very very easily so that's it for test case generation in java uh, in the next lecture we'll be talking on fast input and output so i'll see you there